Hey everyone, it's James from Fun Foods, and today I'm gonna show you how to make this giant s'mores, complete with a giant graham cracker, a giant marshmallow, and some chocolate. So keep watching and I'll show you step by step how to make this. To make this recipe, we gotta start out with a very large bowl, and to that I'm gonna add four cups of whole wheat flour. Next, two cups of regular all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, and two teaspoons of baking powder. Now just whisk this until it's all combined. And just set this aside and we'll work on our wet ingredients next. For our wet ingredients, I have one cup, which is two sticks of butter that soften at room temperature. I have one cup of packed brown sugar and two thirds cup of honey. Normally I would use a spatula to pull out the excess honey, but it's honey, so I'm definitely gonna lick my finger after this. Now you just wanna cream this together. Now just transfer all that onto a bigger bowl. Probably should have started with the bigger bowl first, but that's okay. I'll make it work. Now that we have it creamed together and in a nice size bowl, what we're gonna do is come back to our dry ingredients. We're gonna add about half of the dry ingredients in here. And we're also gonna add, I have one whole cup of milk, but we're gonna add about half of it right now. And we're gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, but we're adding one for right now. We're just cutting it in half, that's all. Now mix this in slowly. All right, so now it's ready for the rest of our dry ingredients. Now we're gonna wrap this up in some plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator for an hour. Just turn your dough out onto this plastic wrap. Now just take this, put this in the refrigerator for at least an hour. We just want it to chill down a bit. Now we need to make our giant marshmallow. And to do that, I'm actually making two batches of my marshmallows. Now I've made homemade marshmallows before. I made Mountain Dew ones and I made Kool-Aid ones. The process is exactly the same, except for we're gonna add vanilla flavoring at the end, not the flavoring we did for those. Now I have my stand mixer, which I'm gonna use for one of these recipes. And I just have a bowl, which I'm gonna use a hand electric mixer to whisk that up. And that's gonna be a challenge, but I'm gonna do it. So we're starting off with one cup of cold water and we're gonna add three packages of this gelatin right in there. Now just put this aside and I'll work on another one exactly like this and then we'll work on our heat it mixture. Now, like I said, we're making two of these batches, so here's one of them. I'm gonna make the other one at the same time. We don't want one to firm up before the other. So in this small, heavy bottom pot, I'm gonna add one and a half cups of sugar, a dash of salt, a half a cup of water, just cold water, and then we're gonna add one cup of light corn syrup. This container holds two cups, so about half of this. And bring it over to the stove. We want to heat it up until it gets to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. So while that's over on the stove heating up, we're going to prepare our dish that we're going to pour them into because we won't have much time after we mix it all together. So I just have some butter and I have this large deep pan. This is going to be our giant marshmallow. So I'm just going to spread it around and get it buttered really good. And also found that confectionery sugar helps a little bit. Um, so let's line it with some confectionery sugar. And just dump out the excess. 
and just put this aside somewhere and we'll come back to it shortly. Okay, so our mixture has reached 240 degrees. So we're coming back to our bowl and you can see the gelatin is nice and thick now. It's thickened up. We're gonna slowly add this in as I whisk it. And we're gonna whisk it for quite some time, probably eight to 10 minutes. And just slowly add it right down the side. So at this point, it's not quite ready yet, and I am making a big mess without a stand mixer. It's splattering everywhere, but we need to add our flavoring, and we're gonna be using vanilla flavoring. So just vanilla extract, about a teaspoon worth. Now I've been mixing this for quite some time with my hand mixer and it's not coming along as quickly as my stand mixer. I put this one in the stand mixer after I started on this one. This one's ready, this one is not. So what I'm gonna do is move this aside. I'm going to fill this with the one that's ready. And the one that's not ready, I'm gonna put into my stand mixer and finish the process and then we'll pour it in there. All right, this is much better. I just finished it off in the stand mixer and now I can pour it in with the rest of my marshmallow fluff. Now this we're gonna leave sit overnight because we need it to firm up and it's gonna take a little while for that to happen. So after about an hour, we can take our dough out of the refrigerator. It's been chilling in there. We can unwrap it. And we wanna flour our surface. There you go. Also flour your rolling pin and just turn our dough out right on there. May have to knead the dough a little bit first before we start rolling it out. And because it's gonna be a giant graham cracker, we need to make it nice and thick. So anywhere between a half inch to three fourths of an inch in thickness. And what I'm gonna to do to measure it out is I have another one of these pans and I'm just gonna lay it there and cut around it with a knife. Now I just put it on a baking sheet. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. But before I put it in there, I want to poke the holes in it just like a real graham cracker. It is a real graham cracker. So I'm just using the back of a um, mixer. There we go. Now just put this in the oven at 350 degrees uh, between 15 to 17 minutes. And the excess dough, we're gonna ball back up, roll it out, because we need another one of those as well. So my giant graham cracker took 15 minutes to bake perfectly. Now we're gonna let this sit and I'm gonna let it sit overnight the same time my marshmallow sits. All right, so I let my giant marshmallow firm up overnight. Now what we gotta do is, first off, dust your surface with some confectionery sugar or powdered sugar, whatever you wanna call it. I'm also gonna dust the top of this with that same powdered sugar. Get it covered really good. Now I put a little butter on a butter knife and uh, I'm gonna coat that as well with some powdered sugar. And we can, since we did this in a tin foil um, container, we can kind of pull it away a little bit and uh, just stick the knife down in there to kind of separate it from the sides. We go so we're going to turn this out onto our parchment paper which i dust it with powdered sugar there we go our giant marshmallow again dust it with more powdered sugar and that's our giant marshmallow now we're going to move on to constructing this thing 
Okay, so here is one of our two graham crackers that we made, our giant ones. And what I'm gonna do is use this one as the bottom. So I'm just gonna take it off. This is just a serving dish. This is where it's gonna end up. And I'm gonna flip it over where not the whole side, but the other side is down. And what do you need for a giant s'mores? Well, you need giant candy, giant chocolate candy to be specific. Um, you can get just the regular size ones if you'd like, but I'm gonna use four of these. And uh, just open them up. And I'm gonna put two more there because this is giant. We need it extra thick on the chocolate. Now to bring back our giant marshmallow and I'm trying to think of a easy way of putting this on there and I think I'm gonna do it in reverse. I'm gonna So I'm gonna put my giant marshmallow down and then I'm gonna take our graham cracker and chocolate and flip it over on top of it like this. Kind of working upside down. Then I'm going to take that and flip the whole thing back. Wish me luck. I'm scared. Don't want to mess it up. There we go. I'm going to dust the top of this with some more powdered sugar just because. And then for our final layer, which is our last graham cracker. Now this is a giant s'mores. Okay, unlike my other videos, I'm not gonna do a taste test right now. And the reason why is I'm gonna take this to my parents' house and we're gonna eat this up all together. But when I get there, I'm just gonna take the top part off, put this in the oven so the marshmallow will brown. And then we can put the top back on, cut it up, divide it up amongst us, and we'll have a good time eating it. Maybe I'll get a clip of someone eating it. <laughs> Cutting through a giant s'mores. Well, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this giant s'mores. It was a lot of fun making this. And if you get a chance to make one for yourself, please share it with me on any of my social media at Fun Foods YT. Also, check out some of the videos I have off to the side. I think you may enjoy those as well. Be sure to hit the big red subscribe button. And until then, I'll see you next time.